Okay, this is the Deerfield Conservation Committee meeting for February 28, 2019. And present are Lewis Mission. Bill Mara, PC. Tim Hilchey. Ben Byrne. Matthew Ainsworth. Okay, and uh, well, we'll get started right here, right off the bat. We've got some new business, and that would be uh, the Eagle Book, the Whip Up. Whipple Pond, uh, renewal of the pond management, and uh, we have someone representing Eagle Brook or yes. SWCA, or yes. if you could just state who you are. Uh, Naomi Valentine from SWCA Environmental Consultants, sorry, not the Jones, um, representing Eagle Brook and West Smith from Eagle Brook School. Okay, if you could just over what your plans are for yeah sure for this, uh, before I get started I have some intent a couple extra documents so that's the additional filing fee correction and I just attached Mark Simpson's comments and highlighted why that correction is okay in now did you send to the, the state, state you did yeah. okay because he'll be he'll be calling if you didn't yeah and that was the fee for the uh, certified mailing Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? When did you mail out to the state? Do you? I mailed the check to the state Monday. Monday. Okay. So they should have it by now. Okay. So the proposed project is within Whipple Pond, as you've already stated, which is on the Eagle Brook School property. It's about 0.7 acres in size. Fairly small. Um, good water quality. The uh, project includes a pond management plan, which is really based in frequent monitoring and as needed management. So the purpose behind this and the reason we're filing it as a limited project is because we're hoping to maintain the good water quality that currently exists within the pond. And in order to do that, we want to make sure that we're going to be able to manage any problematic algae species that might pop up as they have in the past. Um, and this would be a mechanism for the school and uh, SWCA to do that. So we've proposed uh, water quality monitoring as well as algae and nuisance and invasive plant monitoring and then as needed treatment associated with that. Um, the algae treatment would be a chemical application of a al um, copper-based algicide and the Nuisance aquatic vegetation would be a chemical application of reward. And then the nuisance or invasive terrestrial vegetation that would be on the bank, we would use glyphosate to treat. So all three so chemicals. All, all chemicals then? Or all chemicals. No uh, hands on? Well, work or with the aquatic management, there wouldn't be an effective yeah. way in order to treat it mechanically. Stuff, on the bank, it would be possible. So the main problematic species is cattail. Um, you can decide whether or not you think it's necessarily invasive, but it can take over. Oh, so yeah. we're not planning to treat it if there's any cattail present at any point. But if it does start to take over the um, shelf, the aquatic shelf at the edge of the pond, yeah the school would like the opportunity to make sure it doesn't overwhelm the, the lower bank area. Okay. And you, you saw the comments from, I think, Mark. I don't, I'm not sure what he had on. Um, he wanted to make sure that all previous permits were closed out, which they have been. And okay. I have a copy of the certificate of compliance that you all issued, but you have that on file. I can hand it if you'd like. Um, and he made a comment about the fee adjustment and then just yeah. the fact that it's being filed as a limited project. I do have um, email confirmation from the environmental monitor as well, which was posted well past uh, 14 days ago. If you'd like a copy of that, that was also forwarded to Priscilla. Oh, I was? Okay. Yeah. Uh. Those were all his comments. Anybody got any questions on it? Or? <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm learning. I'm, I'm actually learning as I go, <laughs> so I'm a new member. Can you uh, explain, is this something that runs indefinitely going forward, or is this something that has a finite time frame? The management itself? Yes. 
Unfortunately, because there is a, it does, the pond receives stormwater and there's a flowing inlet and outlet. So there's always the possibility of new introduction and there's always the possibility of algae to um, become more prevalent within the water column. So there's no defined start or end. We've requested a five-year permit just so we have the um, capability to manage throughout a moderately long time period. Um, it's possible that there won't need to be any management during that time period. It's possible that there'd be one algae treatment during that time period or annual, depending on the year and the conditions. It's also possible, to your point, that it would need to extend longer. Algae is not something that's very easily um, predicted for aquatic mm -hmm. systems and generally they're so dynamic. And the applications themselves, because of the, the fact that water goes in and out of the system, does that imply that algicide will travel? No, so the reason we like to use the copper-based algicide is because it's miscible with water and it, um, it works its way through the water column very quickly and then it doesn't persist. Um, and that's the same with the aquatic herbicide that we've chosen as well. It breaks down very quickly in water. Is this similar to the, uh, the old one, the management of the pond? Or I or? believe that it is a similar scope. In the past, we've just applied alum, aluminum sulfide, yep. which is a buffered solution to try to settle the um, accumulated sediment and phosphorus, particularly, out of the water column. Um, which is something that we would consider in the future if nutrients became mm -hmm. higher in concentration. So no previous actions were needed to be taken other than the alum application in the past, but the algae has been a problem in the past, which is why we wanted to have this permit in place. Okay, any other questions? Or The only thing I see that I think we'd like to have is uh, under the special conditions would be a yearly report, mm -hmm. whether you do work or not, mm -hmm. and if you are, you know, you did do some treatment uh, before and after pictures, mm -hmm. and just, you know, like I say, just yearly and... Uh, yeah, that's something... Just that so we have an idea of what went on and, you know, for down the road, because, you know, this is going to happen again. Definitely. You know, in five years, so... Maintenance report? Yeah, yeah, yearly mm -hmm. maintenance with pictures or, or just an update what, what went on. Yeah, that's commonly what we'll do with conservation commissions and even the client. We like to produce a final annual report of all management activities, yeah. so that sounds completely reasonable so, to me. Yeah, just yearly and then, then a final one. Think anything else? Or? So if aggressive treatment then is needed, would we have the opportunity to, to have you come back and well, they're, they're, it's, it's up to them. Okay. They're, they're in charge of the whole pond, and whether it needs it or not, they'll have uh, somebody monitoring it and checking it. Okay. So they might, even, they might not even do it this year at all. Mm -hmm. But having that annual report at the end of the year, you would be able to see if they treated they it three not, times yeah. this year what is going on, and then that would be an opportunity for you to respond to the management efforts. But... Right. We don't anticipate it needing to be that frequent. Thank you. One final question. I mean, the pond is used for what other than a place where water resides? So it does collect stormwater, mm -hmm. and it is obviously an aesthetic feature at the school, and they do also use it for some snow making uh, in the wintertime. We also stock it with trout for flats. But you are using it for the snow making? Mm -hmm. yeah. And are they catch and release? Is it all iced over now? It is. It is. Yeah. We have a fountain on it just to provide some aeration. Yeah. And because we use it to make snow, the fountain allows us to see where the ice levels are so kids don't get at it. And yeah. I was just going to say if you're draining it, the ice is going to fluctuate there. <coughs> okay, it is. Uh, yeah, because I think you were up there when we did the. Uh, walkway and the, the new oh, uh, the bridge thing there the outlet and everything that yeah. was uh and that that came out real nice that's why you know we ended up signing off and everything on that mm -hmm. so i 
I don't see uh, a problem. Should be good to go. So I think, uh, other than, like I say, with, I'll put in with a, for a yearly report mm -hmm. with pictures and updates of whatever you want to yeah. send us. And uh, we'll sign off, I guess. Number, wow, five people signed in. I don't think the report's ever had that much ink on it. Be all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Okay, I guess. Uh, we have some old business here. The 198 Mill Village Road. The, uh, we have an enforcement order and a NOI that's been continued from the previous meeting. I guess we should probably talk about the enforcement order first. I think that makes sense. Um. And let's see. <coughs> Yeah, I think uh, I think first we have to. Or I guess what you're gonna, Mickey, you're gonna do it, or, or some of it, or Chris, uh, uh, either uh, one. Sure. So uh, Chris Chamberlain, uh, civil engineer for the proposed project, uh, and uh, uh, Mickey Marcus from uh, SWCA, who was the wetland scientist uh, who did the delineation and also the uh, what we're calling the forensic delineation of the uh, wetlands. Um, as far as the enforcement action goes. Um, so uh, last time we were here, um, we presented SWCA's uh, conclusions on trying to estimate the limits of the wetland um, before the existing greenhouse had been constructed in an effort to determine uh, what area of wetland may have been filled by that previous work. Um, and also uh, presented uh, our proposal for a mitigation area, uh, making up that area with new wetlands at a two to one ratio. Um, we have the plan for that that we can put up and I think uh, it's with you also. Um, one, uh, so as a result of the peer review for the proposed project, we did submit um, a new set of plans electronically. I also have hard copies um, to submit to you tonight. Um, that include that as part of the plan set, which was one of the things the peer reviewer wanted. And I say that because I want to highlight um, that there is one change from the plan that we showed, and that is a slight relocation of where that mitigation area was proposed to be. Um, the reason for that is uh, at the planning board, uh, there has been a lot of concern about uh, the inclusion of the APR I'm sorry, let me, let me put up a plan. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. If I'm gonna say, just to add, so. Um, yeah, so this is gonna move. What happens is when um, a, a notice of intent is filed, DEP reviews them, and there's something called a wetland change data layer. And so they look to see, uh, was there any alteration of wetlands 
on a site that a notice of intent was filed on. And so DEP tagged the site that there was a previous alteration of wetlands historically that was never permitted. Uh, so in our review, basically I looked at uh, the soil maps, the existing site conditions, um, all these aerial photos from many different years, and uh, you know I, I agreed with the DEP that it looked like there was a area of vegetated wetlands that was filled for the construction of the greenhouse, and it looked to be approximately a thousand square feet, and and, and that's uh, that really is an approximate number. You can't really nail that down. So uh, we came up. So DEP suggestion was as part of this notice of intent for the expansion of the greenhouse facility, you, you've got to clean up the old work. Um, so what I propose is 2,000 square feet of mitigation, because I don't know what the exact number was that was filled, but it was approximately 1,000 square feet, so just double it. Um, DEP's suggestion was for you to issue uh, an enforcement order which requires that that work be done uh, as opposed to the order of conditions which we'll talk about next which is a permit which they may or may not ever do so the enforcement order has to be done so that that's that comes first and then we can talk about the project that they're doing <clears throat> so to Orient us. This is the existing site uh, which fronts on Mill Village Road. Uh, there's a driveway back to the greenhouse <coughs> property and there's a bordering vegetated wetlands in the rear of the site. Um, the existing greenhouse is located in this area here. And SWCA's conclusion, as Mickey was just describing, was that uh, Based on that process, uh, they're estimating this area uh, was previously wetland uh, in an area of approximately 1,000 square feet that is no longer wetland uh, that was presumably filled as this portion of the greenhouse was constructed. And so, uh, as Mickey described, uh, their recommendation was for a mitigation area uh, to replicate wetland uh, in an area of 2,000 square feet at that two to one ratio, uh, both nearby that disturbance and connected to the same wetland resource area. Uh, last time I was here, I showed a plan very similar to this with the wetland mitigation in this location. And here's where I just want to highlight why this change was made. When we talk about the proposed project, um, because of various requirements of the zoning bylaw, the, um, the applicant for the new project is purchasing all of this land up to Child's Cross Road. These three parcels have an agricultural preservation restriction on them, so we can't build anything on those, but they will be part of the lot and the reason for that is the existing greenhouse site in the existing condition exceeds the maximum amount of impervious coverage under the zoning bylaw. Nothing to do with the wetlands regulations. Um, and so uh, in order to have a lot that satisfies zoning, uh, we need to include additional land. There has been concern about what is going to happen on these APR parcels. Uh, there's some concern about whether they can be included in some of those calculations at all. Uh, we're quite comfortable with the fact that they can be, and we're hoping that the town's attorney uh, will provide that opinion to the planning board. None of that is relevant here, except for the fact that in terms of what we are proposing uh, be included in the enforcement order for mitigation, uh, we are concerned about proposing any action that requires any work on that APR land um, and causing, causing us um, delay or, or uh, difficulty in getting the project proposed. That said, this is an enforcement order and it's up to the commission uh, to tell us what that mitigation should be. 
uh, one way or the other. So uh, again, this is just a depiction of uh, SWCA's recommendation for that work and uh, where we would propose that it be done, um, but that is obviously the point of the discussion today. Um, in addition to that, uh, Mark had made some comments about the buffer zone impacts and about the fact that uh, this greenhouse project not only filled the wetland but was constructed in the buffer zone of this wetland and there was a suggestion that there be some mitigation effort related to those impacts um, and so again as our proposal of what may be done uh, to mitigate some of that uh, I've had our landscape architect in our office um, prepare a planting plan uh, so what we've done here is reserved about a 10-foot strip immediately adjacent to the greenhouse um, so that maintenance on the greenhouse can be done uh, in the future but otherwise uh, filled in the entirety of the buffer with new plantings. Uh, we suggest that this be done with uh, a fairly dense planting of low growth plugs. Uh, this was, the plant list was selected based both on what SWCA suggested for the wetland plantings and uh, what, what my plant people think is appropriate, uh, but totaling about 5,400 square feet of plantings and uh, something in the neighborhood of 1,500 plugs. In addition to that, we've got some notes that would require um, an invasive species mitigation where uh, someone from either our office or SWCA would go out to identify invasive species that may be moving into the buffer area here. And then we've got a protocol for removing those. Uh, so the idea is that we remove any invasive species that may be in there, heavily plant that buffer zone, um, and then hopefully encourage the good plants to grow uh, while discouraging the invasive species and beating them back. Uh, and then in addition to all of those actions, a, a maintenance uh, into the following year or years to make sure that those changes are taking. Okay, now I know Mark had mentioned something about the other side, the bank there, of, of additional plants. I think we touched base. I don't right. know if you uh, talked to any of your landscape people there or? Yeah, I think. Um, you know, just by, you know, by hand, of course, you know, you're not going to have a machine in there or anything like that. Right, yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if it's appropriate for the enforcement order, uh, I think, again, hand planting, no machines going over to this side, um, that uh, it would certainly be uh, appropriate to fill in um, the area on this side. Uh, we, again, we created this plan in response to those comments and then had a, had yeah. a conversation recently that uh, filling in this area would be appropriate. I think Mark's initial comment I had read talking uh, about areas on the other lots, but uh, certainly um, both sides of the stream makes sense. This basically, this strip between the edge of the wetland and the property line um, is a slope that's, that's not really used for agriculture. The other side of the property line is a field. Um, so enhancing that certainly creates a a separation um, between those two uses. Now, would it be uh, possible to have the same type of planning? Then that would be appropriate? I think so, um, especially you with know, the plugs. Outside. Those would go in quickly yeah. by hand. Um, and there are a couple of shrubs. I think he's got 30 or so shrubs, just as a little bit of foundation of different sizes of plants. Um, and so, yeah, I think we'd certainly be willing to um, put in an additional planting of similar scale uh, on this side to enhance that buffer. Okay. Yeah, because I think that, that, you know, depends on what the board thinks. It just add some on that side and... I do have a question. You, you mentioned that the mitigation area is moving. Um, so this is what you gave us last time? Correct. And is it just moving closer to the building? Yeah, I... Um, moving off APR land? Exactly. Okay. The, the property line is right here. We had proposed it on this side of the line, and now we're on this side of the line. Um, and so it... It still it connects. Does, it's tight. Uh, it's still connected. It's still very close to the area um, that was impacted. Um, so uh, it's, it's very similar in terms of uh, its positive impact on the resource area. 
uh, we think. So if I could just add, um, so, so we're talking about enforcement, we're talking about the, the uh, greenhouse project. Uh, I just like encourage, uh, we should just talk about the enforcement first. Uh, DEP's suggestion to the commission was deal with the enforcement first and then, yeah. and then weave the enforcement into the orders of conditions. So may I hand out the draft enforcement order that I had sent to you guys earlier. So, um, <coughs> yeah, I, I got a copy. I, yeah, oh, we do have copy. Yeah, Priscilla made some. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll yeah. take it. Okay. Um, I, I, I just took the liberty of filling out the paperwork as really a starting point just to make your lives easier. Um, you can change it any way you like, but I tried to capture uh, all of DEP's comments for um, for timing of enforcement. I, I call this sort of like a friendly enforcement. It's uh, uh, it's work that uh, you know that they need for the greenhouse facility, but it, it needs to get done. And and what's different with enforcement is that you're saying you must do this by a certain date and time and these right. are the things you need to do. Uh, so it's like the Cumberland Farms issue, whereas the permit for the order conditions is a permit, they can do it or not. But the, but the enforcement is you're saying you're gonna do it no matter what. So so what, what I've suggested in this is um, the time frame is that they build that area by May 30th, 2019. Um, and that there's uh, invasive species control work and reporting that goes back to the commission for two years, which is kind of similar to the uh, standards for like a wet and mitigation area. So I, I just would suggest that you just read this and discuss this and decide whether you want to issue this or not or change it. Um, and, then, and then have a discussion about um, the actual greenhouse facility site. Right, so the plantings, is that part of the, the greenhouse? It's or? a greenhouse project. It's not, the, the enforcement order is specifically to uh, mitigate for- That area, that one area. For a thousand there. square feet that was never yeah. permitted by the commission. That's what, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought, and we just kind of drifted there a little bit. But. Yeah, I think it, it sort of straddles because yeah. uh, it is, I would say, enhancing that buffer that the, the greenhouse was placed in. Uh, on the other hand, it is beneficial to us if that work does not, is not required on the same timeline as the wetland mitigation because there is some work to build the wall on the back of the greenhouse. Right, right. And we need to put erosion controls back there. Okay, seeing you're moving the mitigation area, is anything changing in that corner? Because you got exist, I think existing storage units or on this this plan here, there. the old plan you gave us, and I don't know if it's up there on those or right. There are the cisterns. Yeah. Um, so those are located right here. Um, so there's no conflict there. Uh, I've reserved uh, sort of a ten foot access way between the fence and the cisterns um, just for maintenance purposes to get to this fenced in area um, and then the wetland area exists uh, outside of the fence okay so nothing else is changing in that corner there other than you move the mitigation correct area okay And, and again, it's it's sort of for you to tell us where the where the mitigation should be done. Um, but again, I, I gave the explanation of why uh, I moved what we're proposing, um, just from our project's perspective. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, you're only you're not moving it. I don't know how many feet over the. You know. Yeah, fifteen or twenty maybe. Yeah, so it's it 
it's in the same area. It's connected to the to the buffer zone there, and or the wetlands there. Uh, did you guys look? At yeah, I read this. At this. Yeah. Just a question about um, how mitigations work, and so should I assume that everything except this corner was permitted by some previous conservation commission uh, because it's all within like 20 feet of an area where you usually have a 100 foot setback the because it's an agricultural yeah. building, they have different that rules. a complicated question because okay. there is a certain amount I'm of learning work. so that's yeah. why I asked these questions there's a certain amount of work that could have been done by right um, but the the extent of the greenhouse that's in the buffer exceeds that so it would have been required to come before the Commission but the Commission could have um, allowed a building to and often does allow a building to be placed in the buffer uh, as long as the the remaining buffer is uh, creates enough of a, a, a buffer <laughs> as a, a protection of the resource area mm -hmm. um, so it is possible that we could be coming today with a new greenhouse project with the building built in the buffer and, and be asking permission to do it. And that would be permittable. Um, and then, again, the, the complication layer is there's, I think it's uh, 4,000 square feet per year uh, mm -hmm. that an agricultural use can construct within the buffer zone by right. So a complicated question to answer. Mm -hmm. So the and the, yes and no. The, the added layer of complication being that marijuana is not necessarily considered an agricultural. Right, but for the for the purposes of uh, agricultural structures in the buffer zone, it needs to be in continuous agricultural use for five years, and then mm -hmm. it's uh, it's grant. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then it becomes established, um, and and it no longer needs to be an active agricultural use in order to stay. Yeah. Good. And I would just add that um, they altered wetlands in the work, and they should have filed a permit and didn't, which Correct. is why the, the enforcement's appropriate. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, DEP is saying is just bring it into compliance, file enforcement, make sure there's a mitigation plan, and then everybody's you know square. Yeah, because I, I talked with Mark today and he, he was right out there you know you sent this to him and uh, and so I, I reviewed it and talked to him and he was you know he was happy with it and he says it's you know whatever else if we feel needs to be done or but he, he thought it was uh, appropriate for you know that little bit of damage that was done there to the wetlands so one final question just just uh, in the um other specify under the second page B findings, there's a word that's sort of blocked out. I'm assuming it's species. It says species, yeah. The, the DEP form didn't wouldn't allow you. Didn't allow, allow that to go. Never allow space. Yeah. 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 So, so the action on this is for this enforcement to basically build a wetland mitigation area by May 30th is um, y you can uh, vote to approve this as written or you can change it or modify it. Um, it's kind of your call, but that's it's kind of like the next step is uh, whether you want to issue enforcement or not. other comments or no I would say thoughts? it's pretty much uh, written out as needed seems like Mark didn't have uh, any problems with it I would say give it a go oh uh, actually because I, I did talk to Mark he did have one comment on finding number five 
Uh, he suggested that uh, the order shall be released by the Conservation Commission in 2020 if 75% surface mitigation is achieved. Right. Not making the assumption that it would be. But is yours, yours doesn't have that right, Nikki. I, I didn't change that. No, no. no. Priscilla did. Okay. okay. Oh, yeah, so, I was going to say, it's, it yeah, says, it says it's here 75. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. Oh, I, I forgot all about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did just make note of that case because you, yep. you know, point. it might take a little longer. It's, it's just the way it is. Right. So, yeah, that's the only, uh, the only thing, so. So, I vote to sign off on this. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then this will become part of the special order of conditions for the NLI. And How much better the pictures have gotten since 1992? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay, I guess now, let's see, I got copies of the special conditions. Do, do you have enough copies? Because I, I made copies for people. Yeah, I think, that. yeah, for so I wanted to make sure we had some. Okay. So she did. That's around the ball. Let's see, there's one there, one there. So I if, if I can just say, I, I just took the liberty of just crafting an initial um, set of orders. You, you can throw these away, you can use these, you can modify it. I, I just started this to make your life easier. Yeah, no, um, I appreciate it. No, it, it does help in... Uh, so, so this is the third public hearing on basically a buffer zone project. And what I tried to do is capture uh, all of Berkshire Design Group's plans, Mark's suggestions. Uh, one of the things that I didn't capture in here was if, you know, I, I, I referenced the Berkshire Design Group planting plan. If you want additional plantings, you can add that. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't include that because it just seemed like the, the greenhouse work was only on one side of the wetland, well, not on both. Um, but I, I, I would just, um, I, don't, I don't know if you have any questions uh, for Chris on the project. Yeah, I was going to, and then we can get back to the uh, conditions, yeah. I think, if, after these guys look at them over okay. and stuff. But if uh, mainly we, uh, we um, had this sent out for peer review. Right, and so the, this, what the I'm going to give you board. has all been sent electronically, but what I have here is... Uh, the peer reviewer's letter um, with comments, our letter responding to those comments, uh, the peer reviewer's response to that, which essentially said all the comments were satisfied, um, and then revised versions of the full plan set and the stormwater management plan, which were revised in, as part of responding to those comments. Um, and I guess uh, I'm happy to go through um, those comments, I can go through all of them. I can highlight the the ones that were more than just yes, we edited the plan. Um, but I, I'll yeah, if you could just to to and just go over. Uh, let's see. If you have the the you know the, the couple changes on the plan. Yeah, you can show have, us. Yeah, you know, have, after the peer review and.
that's the peer review or peer review for the planning board and and us. Mm -hmm. Good, they got the name spelled correctly. Well, the, the 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 second S on Sons has been disappearing from oh. pretty much just about every document. <laughs> right. Um, so, on the original peer review letter, um, there's a series of comments split into categories. Um, so, to just go through them, on the site plan comments, uh, they recommend that a legend be added to the plan. Um, and we did on the, I, I won't flip this back and forth on every little comment. We added a legend. Yeah. Uh, they asked to label the 100 foot and 200 foot riverfront areas on all the sheets. Um, those had previously been shown, um, but they're now labeled on every single sheet, so there's no confusion over that. Um, there, uh, there was a detail about pavement repair uh, in Mill Village Road, which is a non-wetland uh, issue. Um, they wanted some clarification on the drainage that carries the, so to back up just real quick, uh, one of the main stormwater control features is a large infiltration basin in this portion of the site, which primarily takes runoff from the roof of the new building, uh, captures a large volume of that and lets that uh, infiltrate over time into groundwater with an overflow to this uh, rip, uh, swale that's reinforced with riprap uh, for the largest storm events to let that re release in a somewhat controlled manner. Uh, they asked for clarification on exactly how that roof drainage is being directed in terms of storm drains and whether or not um, it ties into the uh, buried perforated pipe that we have. In so we've added the storm drains and some call outs to clarify exactly what's happening um, with that drainage. Uh, they asked for uh, hatching, differentiating the two different types of pavement. Um, again, because this is such a tight site, one of the strategies, and we have good soils, one of the strategies we're using is a permeable pavement uh, that allows the, uh, the rain that falls on the pavement to go straight down into it, uh, into a little bit of a reservoir layer of crushed stone, and then infiltrate to water without having to build that stormwater uh, control infrastructure like we did with the building. Uh, because some of the pavement is in proximity to our proposed septic system, you need a minimum 25-foot offset between the septic system and anything that is deliberately trying to infiltrate water into the ground. So we're simply calling for uh, standard pavement within that 25-foot uh, radius so the water hits it and does not uh, then try to infiltrate within the same ground that the septic system is using. Uh, they ask for a hatch just to make it very clear where that traditional pavement goes versus the permeable. Uh, we had a, an, uh, a duplicate call out uh, for the septic tank, which uh, has been removed. Um, they asked for call outs and details for the bollards that we have around the proposed generator, uh, which were added, uh, a call out here, and a detail um, later in the plan set. Um, there was no dumpster shown on the uh, original site plan, uh, and they uh, asked a question about that. Uh, all of the solid waste, both the cannabis and the non-cannabis waste, is all going to be stored um, inside the building and then removed from uh, the loading dock, so there is no dumpster. Um, they asked for a call out to identify the location of the access signs to the site, uh, which have been added. Uh, those are in the driveway. Uh, entry. Uh, they asked for a detail of the light pole foundation, uh, which was added to the uh, detail sheet. Um, and then there was a question about photometric plan for the site. Um, so as it relates to natural resources, all of the lighting, exterior lighting on this site is focused on the parking lot uh, for the coming and going of employees during uh, dark hours. The greenhouse itself will obviously have grow lights inside, but there are blackout curtains uh, over the top, which is actually to keep the light out during the summertime because the plants require 12 hours of total darkness. Um, and then the walls of the greenhouse are actually going to be a solid, uh, a solid material, so there's no uh, light escaping out of the walls either. Um, there may be some motion uh, sensor lights are around entrances as building code requires, 
The back of the site near the wetlands is totally dark. Um, there will be cameras back there, but they're infrared and the ambient light uh, at nighttime is enough to uh, see that for security reasons. So uh, the wetland area will, will stay just as uh, probably darker than it is now. Um, and then there were a couple of notes that they wanted to see added to the site plan regarding particulars of the town's stormwater bylaw uh, requiring both um, inspections uh, that are required under that bylaw as well as obtaining a certificate of compliance from the town certifying that the stormwater system was built as designed. Um, and they also asked for uh, an indication of snow removal. There's some seasonality to the staffing um, in the facility. Uh, so to some extent, uh, parking spaces will be used for snow removal. For excessive snow, uh, we've indicated uh, that this area back here uh, is what we would use for snow storage. So we feel comfortable with that. Uh, from the wetlands protection standpoint, it's a few hundred feet of vegetated area over which any of that snow melt would, uh, would drain as, a, as that happens. Um, in the section grading and drainage comments, uh, there was again um, a question about uh, detailing the roof runoff as it relates to the um, infiltration basin. Um, slightly different than the, the previous uh, comment, but again, uh, we indicated all of that drainage on the newly revised plan. Um, they asked for some notes uh, that are intended to protect the infiltration basin during construction from things like heavy truck, tra truck traffic or uh, sediment being washed into the basin and then clogging those soils and preventing them from doing their job once the site is stabilized. Um, so the notes indicate that uh, the contractor uh, needs to keep heavy vehicles off of the soils uh, that are uh, dedicated to the uh, infiltration basin and then once it is constructed to put a silt fence around it to prevent uh, sediment laden water from getting in. And those have been added. Uh, under stormwater management report comments, uh, there was a little confusion over the discharge point of runoff from the existing greenhouse, uh, both in the current condition and in the future. Uh, in, uh, we've confirmed uh, with Aryan and Yap, as well as uh, the people working on the renovation of the greenhouse, that both today and in the future, the main portion of the greenhouse, which is this square right here, runs entirely south to north toward those cisterns. Uh, this portion of this greenhouse today does run toward the south, um, and that will continue to be the case in the future. So the existing greenhouse um, uh, does not impact the functioning of this infiltration basin. That water is already going somewhere else, and it will continue to go somewhere else in the future. There was a concern that if any of this was reaching the infiltration basin, it then changes um, the way that that basin would work. Um, they noted that uh, while we did do four test pits around the site, none of those test pits is actually within the footprint of the infiltration basin, uh, which, is, uh, which is fair. And so they asked for a note uh, requiring a test pit in that location just to confirm that the soils and groundwater conditions are similar to the two test pits that were done here and here. Mm -hmm. um, I'll note that I did these test pits, um, I did the evaluation of these test pits myself, I didn't drive the backhoe, but I did do two hand auger holes in this area and, and I'm confident that the soil profiles match. Uh, I feel very good about this location, but the note does indicate that before work on this basin gets done, we need to dig a test pit and I'll go in there and, and just verify that that um, that, that it is as designed. Now, are those test pits shown on the plan at all? Or? Yes, they are. Um, you probably can't see them from there, but uh, I did one here, here, and then there were two in the back. Um, and both of these test pits, they found, you know, typical farm field loamy uh, soils in the uh, top, say, four feet and below that a really granular gravelly uh, material. It got a lot coarser as we went down. Um, on this side of the greenhouse, it's all muck. Uh, it was dramatically different on both sides. Um, but this side is, is really well drained and it's pretty dry out there even, even when it's just rained. Um, 
erosion and sediment controls. Uh, there was a note um, about the overflow from the cisterns being directed away from the disturbed areas onto a riprap splash pad um, just to protect uh, sediment. Uh, on the demolition and erosion control plan, uh, it's just clearly indicated where that is and we've added a detail. The idea is that while this area is disturbed, we don't want the overflow essentially from this entire roof to be carving a canyon in that disturbed site. So we are gonna pipe outside of the site where things are stabilized with vegetation, put down a, a pad of crushed stone to sort of spread that water out and uh, let the water leave the site that way until this area is revegetated. Um, and then we'll return the site to its current function, which seems to work pretty well. Is that on the plan showing? It up? is. I can, I can flip it uh, and show you exactly where. That's on this site preparation plan. Uh, right here. So we're going to essentially, basically these are all open right now and they have an overflow discharge that just spits out on the ground. So we're going to collect that in a header and just pipe it past mm -hmm. uh, the area of disturbance. And then once this is revegetated, we're going to remove all of that and uh, return it to normal. Um, and I should note, that reminds me that because this site is going to disturb more than an acre, we are going to have to do the, uh, the NIPTES permit through EPA and, and create a stormwater pollution prevention plan. That, so that's going to require the erosion controls of the contractor and the, uh, and the regular inspections of all the erosion controls to make sure that those are working. So the, that'll, there'll be reports then going to DEP on that then? Uh, it's not DEP. Um, it's, uh, it's a permit, essentially without an application, you just register that the project exists and is disturbing more than an acre. Decided. The records have to be on site at any time, um, and I believe the commission has the right to go on and inspect those. EPA also has the right. I don't, apparently that does happen from time to time, which we make sure to point out to the contractors that that's not something that they want to uh, discover <laughs> at the wrong time, uh, so to keep up on those inspections. Uh, it's simply a once a week walk around to make sure the silt fence is up and that you haven't filled up that riprap pad full of sediment so that it's not doing its job anymore. Um, there was uh, a request to add a note uh, to the plan about stockpile areas and surrounding them with silt fence. Um, that note actually was already in the erosion control notes on the detail sheet that's in the plan set. Um, but it, must have been overlooked. It's in a bunch of different notes on that sheet. Um, again, there was the note about the perimeter controls around the infiltration basin, which we indicated on the plan and called out. Um, the wetland mitigation comments um, suggested that the SWCA plan showing that 2,000 square foot uh, mitigation area be incorporated as part of the project plans. Um, in reality, that has to be built whether this project goes forward or not, and it has to be built by May 30th, regardless of when this project starts, if, uh, based on uh, the discussion earlier. So it will be incorporated in this plan so that this contractor is aware, but it is also a standalone document that, that will be built ahead of time. Yeah. Um, and then they requested that that mitigation area be shown on the site plan in this plan set, and we've indicated such right there. Um, traffic comments, uh, they wanted a verification that a uh, tractor trailer can get in and out. Um, so we submitted to the planning board uh, a turning analysis that shows that a, that a heavy truck can come in, back up, and exit without having to back onto Mill Village Road. Um, the original plans had a call out for this water tap that had a six inch line coming out of a 10 by four inch tapping sleeve, which uh, is not physically possible. So we corrected that note. Um, they asked us to verify the location of the existing residential septic system for this house to indicate that it had 
in, that it was not essentially overlapping with our proposed septic system. So we did uh, see Dick Kalashevsky and pulled the records for this property. This property is being purchased by Sun's Mass and will be incorporated into the project. This will not be a residence anymore. It'll be used for offices or whatever commercial purposes. Uh, but regardless, this uh, septic system is, uh, does not overlap with the leach field for the proposed system. There's actually no minimum setback between two systems other than the leaching areas can't overlap. Uh, it's, it's really no different than adding another trench um, onto the system if you had them side by side. Um, and then the last comment uh, was really just more of a statement that the proposed septic system will have to meet Title V and the town's health requirements. Um, oh, and then there was one more on the landscape plan, um, which does not affect the buffer planting. It's uh, really just a general planting plan, but uh, but on this sheet, we are calling for plantings that um, fill in some of the gaps in the hedges around what is the new perimeter of the site. Um, and there was a mismatch between one of these call outs and the, uh, and the table of planting. Um, so that was the peer review comments. Uh, as I said, we submitted a letter explaining how we addressed all of those, revised the plans, submitted the plans to both the peer reviewer, the planning board, and now the conservation commission. Um, and then we received a clean letter from the peer reviewer that um, that says all comments from 214 have been addressed, no new comments. Okay. All right, anybody have some questions on this or? And Mark's comments, was there, uh, besides, you know, the plantings and... Right, I am, Let's see. I have them in front of me and I'm going to refresh my memory as to what they yeah. say. Um. I think it's, yeah, kind of pretty much talking about the... Uh, Mitigation. The timing of the mitigation. Yeah, timing and um, additional planning in the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. um, and I think. Yeah. Note number two deals with the the question of lot nine, which is the agricultural lot to the north. Um, just that the, the commission can consider that uh, in terms of if, if the property is owned by the same owner, uh, that you can consider that uh, when creating the enforcement order. Um, that property is the same owner. I yeah. discussed earlier why, uh, from our perspective, what we proposed uh, stays on the southern side of that property line. So everything's just left alone as is Correct. on that lot. Um, I also just uh, want to point out that um, Mark said that if um, they were going to work on the adjacent parcel, that was an opportunity for you to require additional buffer zone plantings on both sides they're not working on that adjacent parcel. So, so all the work is restricted to the existing greenhouse parcel. Okay. Uh, 
Note 4 is, is more language about uh, the buffer zone and uh, requiring additional planting. Um, that, so I guess the, the summary there is that, that we have uh, a plan officially to the commission, um, but the plan we've drawn up uh, essentially plants uh, every square foot that we can while maintaining the maintenance strip that we're hoping to have here, um, which totals, uh, again, about 5,400 square feet and 1,500 some plugs. Uh, and so that's, that's the plan we have. Uh, if there is some specific area of additional planting on the opposite side of the stream, uh, I don't think we would object to that um, if, if the commission feels it's appropriate. Yeah, and we just duplicate the same kinds of plantings that we have on that plan there. That's everybody's thought on, on any of that. Well, I think we, we talked about that in the enforcement that we definitely would like the plantings on the other side, yeah. we would need that to be in the conditions to it for it to stick, correct? And you know, if you guys are agreeable to that or anything else there or sounds reasonable. But uh I think you know just talking with Mark about all that went on over the years, just that little bit extra over on the other side you know, would definitely be an improvement mm -hmm. and just to help invasive species and stuff if you do have us, you know, some new plantings over there and removal of the, uh, the other invasive species there. Sure. If there is any there or whatever. So I think, you know, I see it. Everything else looks good. You know, he, 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 he had comments and, you know, I told him about it and, uh, he said, you know, sounds good, and other than his comments, and he looked over Mickey's uh, special conditions, and so we will uh, add some additional planning on the opposite side, of the greenhouse there, that similar plantings. The, 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 uh, uh, what I did not add in those draft conditions would, was the additional plantings that you're just talking about on the other side uh, or invasive species control of that area. Okay, that's, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, it's, it's in the enforcement piece, but I, it's not yeah. in these draft orders. Okay, so we should. So you're saying that's in the enforcement order? It's in the enforcement, yeah, what I, what I would, what, 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 if you're satisfied with, you know, Chris's presentation for the actual project, yeah, um, you should decide to, whether you want to close it and, and then take up the orders and we can just go through these and you probably want to change the language of some of these based on, on what I just heard you say. these over you have any special conditions yeah we're just gonna add in uh, the other uh, embankment and uh, invasive control yeah so I'll just just I'll add that in yeah. and uh, I think so I think uh, you know yeah I think otherwise the language is is sufficient okay. and uh, yeah I'll have uh, you know get this to Priscilla tomorrow we'll work on it okay and uh, other than that, I, I think, you know, it's been reviewed in, by a few people, and, uh, yeah. and I think, you know, like I said, Mark, you know, seemed happy with uh, what was going on, and 
he definitely have the final say, so. He does. <laughs> well, he, he had good comments. Yeah. He's very thorough. Yeah, no, no, he, he helps out. He's helping me out. Yeah. And so. Motion I make a motion that we uh, sign off on the notice of intent with the special conditions with that added uh, I'll second added plantings and removal of the base of species there. So second. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. 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 So. Thank you. Um, anyway, just for official records, this is a copy of that planting plan, oh. which has been so, so that'll need okay. to get revised and given to you. Right. Yeah. But well, we presented it, so I want to make sure you have. Yep. The, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, I'll I'll mark these that you know we got received a new set of plans and okay. dated uh, today. Are they are they're all today? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the full plan set is dated uh, Monday. If I, you should check, <laughs> I, I think it's Monday. The full plan set. That new planting plan. Was uh, today, yeah. Was today. Mm, let's see. Uh, don't look at that. That's the yep, survey. It's Monday. So right there. Oh yeah. Oh, it's in, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you all for your time. Well, Appreciate it. Set of plans. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mickey, for some help there. These are just copies for us for for visual aid. Yeah. Visual aids. We'll have to recycle some of this. I gotta, you know, Priscilla made some and. Left handers are very well represented on this board. <laughs> My wife would be pleased. <laughs> Hey, Mickey, I, I have one question for you. And this, just got a question on this form. These are on the online form. Now, oh, for special conditions. Yeah, so you're... you're you, were, you, you don't have a... I didn't fill out the form. No, no, I know. But, but Priscilla, you know, right. had... So it's going to be the same as what you would normally do for you. Um, See, we don't have any bylaws so or anything, just, but you still put it down say, here. Then you just say there, see special conditions attached. Yeah. And then yeah. You, you would attach But it, it would be under this even though it's it's in this. Uh, oh, 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 it says, uh, oh, here, it, uh, I'm sorry. It would right be here. up there. You just say see special conditions attached. So, yeah. so the DEP has. Yes, it looks like a little different than what I've seen, yeah. So, so the DEP only says like, you have to sign, you have to follow, right. you have to register it, and then you can add the as special conditions. So you just say right there, see attached conditions, and then you can just put whatever you want. Yeah. Okay. And, and if you don't want to add conditions, then, then the DEP regular conditions always apply. So it's like you know, Over, yeah. Mm -hmm. Report of the registry, all that. Okay, thank you. Okay, cleaning house here. Mm -hmm. Plenty of paper. Keeping logs. We've had a lot of interest in things going on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since everybody, the other guys left there. <laughs> but okay, okay, let's see. I gotta find. There it is. All right. Uh, Got a request for comments? Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, on that, that there, let's, let's get that out. It's 
under the mail. Yeah, they're uh, zoning board. There, take a quick look at that. That's, they're just asking for comments on, uh, you know, over there at the uh, Atlantic Furniture, over there on 116, the entrance, you know. The new facility. They, yeah, the new facility on 116. Mm -hmm. There's an entrance they went and put in, and uh, so they, I guess they're questioning it, and I'm not sure, you know, what the deal is there, but. Uh, I would say uh, our typical comment. Yeah, no, no comment. comment. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's already in, and. Uh, Where is it? It's, uh, you know, across, kind of by the DPW garage. You know, okay. where, you know where you're going to the industrial park there. Mm -hmm. It's you know, how they cleaned up everything. What's well, down the far end, uh, the east end, and it's a small entrance there. Okay. So we'll just write. Uh, Happy to answer any sure. other questions if you have them representing Deerfield Industrial. So. Oh. <laughs> You didn't disturb any wetlands when you built it, did you? No, it was an existing driveway. Um, Not putting in so a bridge over a river? <laughs> no. It was, uh, the water, right? it was a driveway that had been there for since the park was built. Um, and it that was driveway was? Yeah, it was something that was dormant for many years. Um, oh. But it was put in when the park was built. Uh, and then when we repaved last year, we paved that also. Okay. No, I, I saw it there, and of course it's been closed and stuff, so I... Right. So I guess there was a little, it, they, it, there was a misunderstanding, I guess there is there or still is or? Yeah, so basically we, um, we checked with Mass Highway, um, you know, just to see what the status of the curb cut was because it hadn't been used in X number of years. Yeah. Um, so they did not have a, a current um, permit for it. So uh -huh. we applied to Mass Highway, got the permit approved, Oh, okay. um, and then we were uh, issued something by the building commissioner's office asking that we uh, go to the ZBA for a special permit, which that's what's in front of you now. Oh, okay. So, I guess we're all set with there. We have no okay. comment. And all right. <laughs> we stand with our We like comment. those kind of things. <laughs> of no comment. Perfect. No yeah. comment. Thank you. Okay. okay. No other business. Let's guess we ought to review the minutes. Minutes and mail. Minutes and mail. Those yeah. were the minutes that uh, Priscilla passed out. Yeah, she. Yeah. I that was kind of a kind of a reminder to. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I reviewed them already. Yeah, yeah she's already. We're both not here, so. Those out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does not apply. So, I make a motion to accept the minutes as written. I second. Aye. 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 So Aye. We'll accept the minutes of the last month. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. We got a for the mail. We got a uh, summary expenditures for the end of February. Our expenditures for the uh, concom. So, if anybody just wants to take a look at it, it really hasn't changed any. Spend it big. And anybody, uh, the other thing is the annual report. Anybody take a look at what she sent? Yeah, I read, yep, I read it. Yep. So I, read I don't it. know if you can think, you guys can think of anything else to add to it or. Nothing else. Just kind of, you know, 
kind of the basics of what we, you know, the few bigger projects there we did. Mm -hmm. So I'll talk to her and tell her it looks good. And Thanks to Steve and Brian. Yep. Thank them for, for the years they've been here. My many years, I gotta figure that out yeah. too. Okay, well, oh, you're here. You can be official. Oh, fantastic. Keep forgetting to give it to you. Let's see, I guess that's it. And you'll find out probably more about if you're, but it, it's probably very likely, you know, we're all under, they get five. Yeah, I mean, we, you were operating for five, and you were paying for five, yeah, even so though you weren't authorized for five, and so I don't, they, yeah. they, they already, has, they've registered us and everything. And Yeah, so that's good yeah. then. Like I say, you just have to, you know, bring all the info after, and yeah. Yeah. you have to give it to Priscilla or yeah. the next meeting, so. So I guess do we get any other business not reasonably known 48 hours prior to meeting? I don't think so. I think that's... Nobody's raising their hands. So no other business? No other business. I do have one thing that I need to make you aware of. Um, I'm the moderator's appointee for the co uh, Community Preservation Committee. Yeah. And I am I have a call into Dan Graves to ask him whether he wants me to switch to be the Conservation Commission member, if that's what you would like. Um, and then he could appoint someone else. Mm -hmm. um, the option would be either to leave me as the moderator's appointment and appoint somebody else here who wants to go to another set of meetings or um, to appoint me uh, based on what he tells me and then have him appoint someone else. Um, so it's not something we need to decide tonight, but um, okay. you understand. But Steve Barrett used to be the CONCOM guy um, and the three years I've been on the committee. Uh -huh. uh, so. Um, you know, I'll report back to you what he what he advises, and I'm yep. fine either way. Yeah, no, that that that's fine. Um, because, yeah, yeah, if you're already going, it probably would make sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or, oh yeah, you're, yeah, exactly. So then, you know, he could appoint another citizen, and yeah, and uh, you know, no, no, that'd be fine. It would, you know, I'd just soon have you do it, and because mm -hmm. they appointed me co-chair, so one way or another, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just want to. Make sure we get as many members there as possible because we don't have a housing department representative because there's no housing department yet. So, um, okay. All right. Next date of meeting would be three twenty-eight. But I can't make it for that day, so. And it's my birthday, so I don't think I want to come either. <laughs> All right. No, I'm. <laughs> and I, I am traveling. I'm coming back on the twenty-seventh from. My mother's birthday is March 26th, so I'm coming back from Texas the 27th. So oh. What does that leave us for? Okay, because I was going to say, I was looking on the calendar. I can check with uh, Priscilla. I was thinking the 20, you know, 26th or 27th. Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm back, you know, into, into Bradley around 2. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I would have to confirm that. But, you know, we got, we should have, yeah, but, hopefully, yeah. enough guys. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what the I was 26th thinking. 26th or 27th works for me. Either one? Yeah, either one. I don't know. How about you guys? Uh, I'm fluid, but, yeah, it should be. 20, Tim, maybe maybe the 27th. I think that way there, you know, if I do Tim that, has I, a chance to make it. He makes it. And, yeah. and I don't think anything else is going on. I looked on the calendar today. They actually had it posted online. And... Uh, you know, because sometimes the finance committee meets and stuff, but I don't think we're going to, I think this was the major mm -hmm. hurdle that we had a right. both of these, so mm -hmm. I don't think there should be anything too big, you know, the next month. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. We need yeah. a break. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, why don't we try for the 27th, uh, Wednesday, March 27th. And then I guess we'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll yeah. second that motion. Second that. Right. What is it? 820? 820. That sounds good. Thank you, gentlemen.